Hi guys, sorry I have to be quiet because my son is sleeping, but uh, I guess you've heard about the scare with the E. coli con contaminated cucumbers in Europe and something like 1500 people have been infected and I think 18 people have died from it and the more news that comes out the worse it sounds. According to the WHO it's very contagious and very deadly. It is a highly contagious and toxic new strain. It's a totally new strain and it's been killing healthy people and it can cause diarrhea, hemorrhagic colitis, and hemolytic uremic syndrome and other illnesses. And hemolytic uremic syndrome is something that causes kidney failure and it's pretty serious. In an article by Mike Adams on Natural News, he says that uh, this strain is resistant to eight different antibiotics and also it possesses the ability to produce special enzymes that give it what might be called bacteria superpowers known, known as ESBLs. He says extended spectrum beta lactamases are enzymes that can be produced by bacteria making them resistant to cephalosporins which are most widely used antibiotics in many hospitals and this article is called Forensic evidence emerges that European E. coli superbug was bioengineered to produce human fatalities. And the reason he says that is that it's, it's very unlikely that an E. coli strain would just suddenly pop up that's resistant to all these different antibiotics because normally they would develop resistance to one strain at a time and plus on top of it, it's got these these other two, you know, mutations that produce the special enzymes. So it's very suspicious, but um, as if that's not enough. On Rima Labo's blog, Food Freedom, it says, Germany's superbug is weaponized with bubonic plague DNA. Now, if you go and read these articles, by the time you get to this one, I think you'll be pretty convinced that this was made in some kind of a lab. Helge Karch, the director of the Robert Koch Institute, Germany CDC, who heads the consulting laboratory at the Munster University Hospital in Germany, says that he has discovered that the super killer contains DNA from E. coli, which is what he expected. It also contains, unexpectedly for those who don't expect such genocidal manipulations, DNA from the organism that causes plague, responsible for wiping out a quarter of Europe's population during the Black Death. Now, what would be the purpose of making this kind of a super bug and then unleashing it on the cucumbers or unleashing it on the population via organic cucumbers? How European health authorities are using E. coli scare to wage economic warfare against vegetable farmers. And I think he's come to the right conclusion here. One book that really explains explains well how the New World Order uh, wages economic warfare on just about every country is The Globalization of Poverty and the New World Order by Michel Chosodovsky. I'm not going to explain everything that he said in the book, but it's like they go into diff every country and then they use various tactics to screw up their economies. You know, they'll, they'll bring in GMOs or they'll raise bans on imports so they'll import stuff so the local farmers can't sell their stuff they'll make them you know grow commodity crops and a whole bunch of different things so this is an ongoing thing and people are you know demanding real food people are more and more becoming aware of the, the risks of processed foods and GMOs and there's a bigger demand for organic now than, than there ever was the organic food business is, is a really big threat to you know Monsanto and those kind of companies because because people don't want the Monsanto crap they don't even care if it's cheap they just don't want it so I wouldn't put it past them to do something like this you know to wipe out the competition okay and there's one other thing I'd like to add here's a video Joplin fungus killing survivors secret morgue biowarfare June 10th 2011 you may remember a while ago the CNN reporters were trying to get to this secret morgue where they were keeping the bodies from the uh, 
the people who died in the tornado in Joplin, Missouri, and they got stopped by like police who told them to get out of there and that they weren't allowed to go there. They treated them like criminals, basically, for trying to do their job. Well, now there's a fungus popping up in that town that's affected some of the survivors, although according to this article here in the LA Times, only eight people have been confirmed to have the rare fungus and uh, three had died. So it's, it's really just a handful of them. And, and some people are thinking that, you know, this was also a biological weapon that has been released. So I guess there's a lot of fear going on right now about the E. coli and possibly also the fungus. And yes, they do use, you know, biological weapons like that. Sure, they, they can do that. I wouldn't put it past them. But I'd just like to remind you of the, uh, the swine flu, you know, outbreak in 2009. That was a genetically engineered virus. But did it kill millions of people? No, it didn't. And then a short time after that, there was the Ukraine flu. And there were reports going around that it was like a mix of three flus and really deadly and that your lungs would reach a temperature of 150 degrees and melt and turn black. And maybe it was even the plague. Remember, there was a couple of news reports that came out from the Ukraine that said it was really bad. And, and people were kind of panicking about it. But um, in the end, nothing really happened with that. And the swine flu also. I think that the biggest uh, threat here is the fear. Yeah, okay, there's a, you know, a toxic E. coli on the cucumbers. I'm sure there's a way you can clean the cucumbers to get rid of that. Like, I don't know, maybe um, like hydrogen peroxide or something. But, but the, the main thing they're trying to do here is scare people. And I don't think they're going to wipe out millions of people with an E. coli bug. I don't think that's how they roll. But I think how they roll is to scare the crap out of you. But let's not go to the conclusion that, oh, now they've unleashed this E. coli slash plague and it's contagious by sneezing. And if you just, you know, take the subway, you're going to catch it and your red blood cells are going to explode. and You're going to die a horrible death because I'm just looking at the last couple of years. And I would say that the biggest aspect of these kind of campaigns was always the fear. They don't have to kill you. They just want to make you think you're going to die. They want you to think that the cucumbers will kill you. Because what they're really trying to do is kill the cucumber market. Kill that more than you. Well, they'll kill you indirectly by making you eat their Monsanto crap. But they've got to kill the industry first. You know, it's like in, in, in here in, in Canada. I think it was last year or the year before. They had a listeriosis outbreak. It came from meat contaminated at a maple leaf plant in Ontario. And a few people died and they were old people, you know. I mean, people who were not in the best health to begin with. And what they did was they used that as an excuse to crack down on the local uh, cheesemakers who were, who were making cheese from raw milk in Quebec. And the cheese was never found to be contaminated with listeria or anything else. The, the listeria thing was just used as an excuse, but it had nothing to do with the cheese, but that didn't matter. And they made them throw out something like 800 pounds of cheese. I mean, I can't remember the figures exactly, but the point was it kind of wiped out a lot of those small raw milk cheese businesses. That's the goal here, is just to have all these industries centralized, but in the most disgusting way. All agribusiness, Monsanto, GMOs. So the worst thing is, t is if you start getting scared of organic food, because that's what they want. That's the biggest threat here, is, is your own fear. Uh, that's really what I think. Well, thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.